Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Greg. I'm going to go over the uh, cryptocurrency markets, including Bitcoin and uh, uh, some other assets outside the crypto market. Try to put this all together, make sense of it for you guys. So you have a uh, light in the middle of the mess. Now, one thing to say, here is my Twitter page. Um, I'm not super active on Twitter. I'm not posting every 30 minutes or something like the plan B or the plan C guys are over there posting all the time. I'm not doing that. I'm trying to do it more through YouTube because I can explain myself a lot better than I can on you on uh, Twitter. And uh, what do you have? 300 characters. Then I know you can post more under Twitter and make some more characters underneath that. But, you know, I post something and people have a lot of questions. So I'm like, all right. Forget that. I'm going to go over to YouTube and explain myself a little bit better. It's still a little bit confusing because it is very difficult to read markets. And the reason why it's difficult to read the markets is because you have to eliminate all your feelings. You have to be like Terminator in front of your computer. And I'm not kidding, guys. You literally have to be like Terminator. Best traders uh, know how to take your feelings and just stuff them away. And you have to do that. Once those things arise up, you start getting, and, and you guys know what I'm talking about. I mean, you still get them, like the FOMO, FOMO wave. I mean, don't don't get me wrong. I, I saw some of those uh, green candles going up at the last run, and I was like, oh, geez, you know, just, you know, FOMO is starting to hit in. So it gets to everybody, even the best of them. So here's my Twitter page. One thing I want to say, guys, is that looking at the market, here with Bitcoin, okay, we have Bitcoin. Let's just go, uh, I'm just going to use that example with Bitcoin. I do think, I believe I should say that we are in um, more or less, if you want to call it a moment of truth area. Is there more downside for Bitcoin? You can never rule that out. You always want to keep the downside in the back of your mind, okay? When it comes to uh, doing any type of swing trading, you want to position yourself first with potential downside risk first, okay? What can I lose before thinking about what can I gain? All right. If you take that and flip it, where it's not worried about, okay, I can make these much gain. I can make all these gains. Flip it and go, okay, what can I lose? And protect it from there. And the gains, you know, once you know it and it starts going up, you know that you have your gains and you start locking them in as an example. So here's the deal with Bitcoin. When Bitcoin was up here at 54,000, 55,000 in, in this area, everybody was euphoric and talking about how it could go so much higher. Um, and that was the bullish mentality. And what I'm starting to notice now down here with Bitcoin are the bears are doing the same thing. They are talking about how Bitcoin is going nowhere but down. It's the same thing. And when I started noticing, it started this week. This week is when it started. They are so sure that this is going down to 10,000 and 8,000. I mean, they are very, very sure, guys, just like it was over here. And to me, that's a good signal a good sign that Bitcoin is probably if it has a bottom there or is, is uh, maybe one more low, but more, it, there's a good shot. You have a good shot that the bottom was there with Bitcoin, guys. You really, really do. Uh, do I know for sure? Nope, I don't know for sure, but you have a good shot. And finding the bottoms on Bitcoin is difficult. Finding the bottoms on S&P, NASDAQ, those are huge, huge, you know, lots of money there. So it's very, lots of computers, very difficult to find it. Those smaller cryptos, I think the smaller cryptos are actually a little bit easier to chart. Why? Because the computers, they don't have the computers infested with them yet. They do more natural moves. That's just my take on it. So over here, Twitter, I want to let you guys know, haven't been saying much about it lately. If you want to support the channel, I already have people soliciting me to pawn off their project. And I'm not doing that, guys. I'm not doing that. Um, you know, when I watch a YouTube channel, I know some YouTube channels have to, you know, advertising is part of their strategy to increase their revenue. And, um, you know, some of them I watch, it's like, hey, they're okay. They do pretty good, I guess you could say, you know, there's some YouTube channels out there that do pretty good. But when they start, you know, and then and then this whole process and you have five minutes of them, hey, well, telling you why this is great. I mean, you know, I'm looking at going, well, you know what's going on. You know, they're getting paid to say this. So now you're thinking, hey, you know, do they really like it? They're doing it for money. You know, that's that's the actual agenda. They're doing it for money. And it could be just the crappiest project. So then, you know, the standard, in my opinion, goes way down, if you know what I mean. So, 
but we're going to go over the markets and um, like Ethereum here, Binance, Coin, a little bit, and Bitcoin. But what I want to do first is I want to go over the, uh, the it's going to depend on the S&P 500 and the, uh, you know, the NASDAQ and stuff. And also the DXY, I want to go over that with you guys. So here's the DXY. I want to put this $160 DXY target that some of the bears are coming up with. I want to put this to rest. All right. I'm going to explain to you why that $160 target up here for the dollar is likely the, the, the odds of that is very, very small. OK, I explained to you right here through this uh, wave structure and why the dollar, the DXY is going to be going down and to the right. OK, so first, the overall picture here on the monthly for the DXY is, is right there. So you can see it has it, it it did a five wave swing in here. You can see this peak one, it did a correction back down for a two, and it went up here to swing up for a three. There's the peak of the third wave, and then there's the fifth. So you got one, two, three, four, five. You have a, a big wave right there. And you can see here's your third wave peak, and over there, there's your divergence to there to there. And it did another correction. Okay, now it's up on this wave. OK, so now you have a wave one, a wave two and or a wave three and a wave five. OK, so and now you have a massive amount of divergence on the monthly. OK, now, is there a possibility that it could go way, way up there? Just keep going up and up. It could. We see uh, how high it is at 76 on the monthly. More than likely, it's not going to. It's, it's running on steam. Like I said, it's a topping process. I'm looking at a DXY to go up maybe 109, 110. It could shoot up to 114, actually, guys, as a max. Once that, once the DXY is done here, okay, it's going to start trending down again. Now, one of the reasons why the DXY, in my opinion, is going to be going down into the left, the DXY here is measuring the strength of the dollar against other currencies, okay? However, when you take your dollar, Bear with me, guys. I'm trying to make this as simple as possible. Your dollar over time that you get, if you live in the United States or whatever currency you have, and if you're watching this channel and you live in another country by chance, your currency is being devalued, more than likely. I doubt that it's backed by gold. I doubt that they're, they're doing, they're, all the countries are going to the monetary policy of the United States. And the only thing that they know how to do since the, uh, let's say the 80s, more or less, is what? Print. That's what they do. They call it MMT. It's a new, uh, it's the new wave of monetary policy that I don't think is going away anytime soon. Look at the states in the United States, right? Handing out money to combat inflation, right? They, that's all that they know. The other, China. So the, the DXY's trend is down and to the right. Why? Because the dollar is getting weaker as a, uh, 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 as a, currency to buy goods and services even though the dollar this is measuring the dollar measuring the, cur the, the, the currency dollar against other currency guys that's why this is going up because it's out of all the currencies the dollar is the best if you will okay right now it is somewhere down you know maybe 50 or 60 or years maybe another currency will take over and be the best currency we just don't know yet so that's why the dollar here is not going up to these areas and the markets are going to get crushed and all this, you know, the things that that's being purported out there. You just have to use it. You, you really, when you come to these assets, especially like the NASDAQ and the S&P guys, and you check things and you want to look at an overall trend of where something is going, go out to the monthly chart like you can with the DXY, check it and see, OK, does this make sense? And then if they're saying, oh, if the DXY not well, possibly go to 160, you know, you're probably like, yeah, this guy's just saying things. Maybe he's doing it for views and stuff like that. So it's going to be peaking here. And the reason it's good there. So if you can see this massive trend down and then it does a uh, it actually does a five wave swing up. OK, so what the dollar is actually doing, guys, is it's going it's going down impulsively and it's doing a swing up. Then it's going down impulsively, if you will, right here. And then it's doing a swing up. 
then it's going to go down, then it's going to do a swing up. And you can see the trend of the dollar because the dollar, like if I have a thousand dollars right now and I go buy a bunch of groceries with it, let's say I want to load up for three months in groceries with a thousand dollars, I go to the store next year, that same thousand dollars is going to get me less groceries. That's why this is going down, down and to, to the, uh, to the right. Okay. But right now it's going up and to the right because this chart is measuring the currency dollar against other currencies. But eventually it's going to come down here like so. And then it's going to do a correction back up probably to this trend, or maybe, you know, you could take your trend and maybe this is the trend right now. You're just not going to know. So, and then go back up to the trend and then start over and eventually get down there. In my opinion, what this is actually doing is one, two, one, two, one, two, like so. So what does that mean with the dollar? The dollar eventually is just going to fall. And that's when hyperinflation is going to be happening down the dollar. That's years and years down the road. That could We probably won't even be around when that happens. That's likely what's going to happen with the dollar. Okay. So I want to let you know that, that, you know, it's in a, it's in a topping process, guys. It's not going to be spiking up and then the uh, markets uh, are going to get crushed. As a matter of fact, I'm looking forward to this. I've been waiting for this. This is good news. People have no idea how good news is going to peak up there. And this wave, you can see that wave that it made one, two, three. And this is the fourth. It's an ending diagonal right here. This is called an ending diagonal. Those are news to the channel. When an ending diagonal always ends something. So it's going to spike up here, possibly could go up to 114. I will be surprised if it spikes to 114, but hey, you never know. It could do a fifth wave thrust and diagonals like to do that. So the trend line is right there at 110. Can it spike out of there? It can. Diagonals like to do spikes out of there. They end uh, fast like that, boom, and then they correct fast. So then the trend will be like this for the DXY back down like so. And that's going to be good for the NASDAQ for the S&P, for Bitcoin, anything that's risk, this is starts trending down, that's gonna be really, really good. A lot of pressure is going to be released. One of the reasons why I think Bitcoin's over here stuck in what it's doing, it's hard to start. There's other reasons for that too, that it's a big asset, you know, half a billion dollar asset right now. And when it's bullish, then it's a trillion dollar asset. It takes a lot more money to move that too. That's another reason. So, and then this will go down and then you know, it'll be really, really good for the uh, the risk on assets. All right, guys. So I just wanted to put this nonsense, some of the nonsense that I see out there to rest. Um, there's just right now with the wave structure, it's not possible for the uh, the for this for this to shoot up to those numbers. OK, just with this wave structure and in, in the RSI to, to 160, it's going to need to correct way, way down here and then start its shot again. It's got to correct this leg. Let's just take this leg as an example. You can see this leg to continue just to keep going up at some point, guys, it has to, if it wants to, you want to see this continue to go up, it's got to correct this leg back down here to continue to go up. So either way, it's going to do a correction, no matter how you look at it, either way. So, and then uh, it's also going to depend too on the uh, S&P 500 guys and looking at it, you know, the S&P 500 is going to be a driver of what's going to be going on with Bitcoin. It appears so. Even though the Bitcoin is not 100% correlated to the S&P 500, that is true. You cannot say that. It can deviate from it probably at any time. However, that was in the early days of Bitcoin. That was in the early days of Bitcoin, guys, when it was a much smaller asset, much easier for it to deviate. It took a lot less money to move it around. Now it's a much bigger asset. At, you know, financial wise, money wise, and it's going to take a lot more money to, to move that around. So um, just looking at the charts and everything that's going on with Bitcoin and the big Bitcoin dominance chart, if you're looking for your 10 or your 20 X in this next wave run, it's not going to be with Bitcoin. I mean, you guys know that that's just a numbers thing right there. I mean, look at Bitcoin. It's at 20. Let's say Bitcoin's at 20,000 to get a to get a 10 X out of that. It needs to go to 200, you know, so. Not to say the gains won't be there. You know, if it goes from 20 to, say, 75 or 80, that's a 4X, which is pretty darn good. Um, but, you know, the 10Xs and the 20Xs, we know where that's going to be. It's going to be in the alts. And I actually think there's going to be a massive alt season just because I think the dominance on Bitcoin is going to continue to go down. If you take a look at the, the uh, Bitcoin dominance chart. 
So with Bitcoin, it's in a uh, correction over here. And some of the older uh, crypto guys were around in 2017, 2018 is, you know, they're expecting the, the bear market over here, guys. Like, here's the bear market for Bitcoin. They're just under the assumption that this is a bear market. I don't think so. This is a corrective cycle of the uh, overall trend, which is up. OK, the bear. This is this is different than this. This is a fourth wave correction. This is actual bear market to correct the whole cycle. This is correcting this third wave right here to then to go into a fifth wave, in my opinion. OK, so and then they, they're expecting the same thing over here where Bitcoin dominance shoots way up and it's not happening and are scratching their head. I can see them on Twitter. They're kind of scratching their head and watch some of the, those guys on YouTube going, hmm, I was kind of expecting it to go up, but it's not going up. Well, I mean, think about it, guys. I mean, markets change. You have assets now in the market like Ethereum, you know, like Solana, um, you know, other assets like that, you know, that are in, uh, you know, in the market. And where are people hanging out in the cryptoverse? They're not, they're, they're not buying Bitcoin to be able to go, to go, buy nfts and and you know do these other things in the crypto market they're they're going over to solana they're going over to these other chains to do that that are theory based layer ones and layer two wherever they're going as an example they're going over there so my opinion the overall market is changing the overall crypto market is changing and um you know is bitcoin going to be going up and to the right yeah more most than likely but i think you know, the reign of Bitcoin is kind of, I don't want to say it's coming to an end, but I think uh, some other players are going to be popping out ahead. So go back over the S&P, guys. Um, this whole, uh, I want to put the uh, 2008 crash or the mega crash that uh, is purported out there in, the, in some of the media, the YouTubes and stuff like that. Okay. So overall trend of the S&P 500, massive, here's this massive wave one back in 1929, uh, and then this massive correction. Um, to say to to say that uh, the S&P is going to have a massive 2008 style crash over here uh, like this, uh, not likely, guys, not likely. Uh, these wave structures, usually uh, they don't do that. And then when you have an asset like this, the reason I know that they don't do that, you, you need to have something over here drastic happen, like the Fed raises interest rates to 15 or 20 percent. That that could do it. Maybe I would say that that probably would do it if they did something like that. Um, the the S&P 500 has this is a wave one of the fifth wave. So more than likely, this wave over here is going to be at least probably long, as long as this wave over here, guys, something like that. So this wave was like, you know, 50 years and this wave from here is going to be like 50 years. So in my opinion, it's going to go. Um, the other thing is, too, with the S&P 500, is it is it done? You know, is it going to um, let me go out to a, a weekly chart or a, a, a three day chart with the S&P 500? Is um. You know, it's a good question on the S&P 500, but the uh, the deal with it is that, um, you know, it, it can do what it's doing in here is that it could do a mass. It could still be in a correction and be going up into a B wave, guys, and then finish that correction off like that over here. OK, kind of like the uh, what I was showing on the NASDAQ. So here's the uh, the NASDAQ. And this is a hyper bullish. Um, uh, this is hyper bullish, guys. You know, here's this one, two. Some people are calling that a uh, a wave. It's not, guys. It's it's an ABC wave. This is a uh, a wave down, and then in the middle here, you can actually see it in the RSI. Okay, how it's a three wave move, and it did a, a B wave in there, and then up, and then it finished it off. So it's a one, two. This is a very very bullish setup, and it's going into a uh, third wave. This uh, this asset this is like Microsoft guys, this is like Microsoft. You take a look at Microsoft right here. This is Microsoft. Microsoft is uh, up and to the right for years to come. You take a look at Microsoft. People are like, oh, it's gonna crash. I mean, this wave. You see how small that wave is? Look at that small wave up there, and then look at this all the way down here, guys. It took it. It took a lot of that out. So if I come over here on the monthly RSI. 
I go, okay, where did it go to? I come over here. So the uh, it's right there. And then now it's over here on the RSI. Um, you know, it did a really good job of correcting this whole area with the momentum indicator. Okay. So, you know, um, a lot of people are pretty bearish. All I can say right now in the uh, traditional markets is I would be very careful. You know, I would not be surprised to see Microsoft shoot up. It could be a massive shoot way beyond all time highs and then do its correction too, guys. So um, I, I just, I'm not seeing it. I'm, I'm seeing like a lot of uh, bullishness more than I'm seeing bearishness personally. Now, then again, I could be wrong. So where does that leave us with uh, Bitcoin, guys? I'm going to go out to the uh, four hour chart and show you that uh, personally, um, the, the, the velocity of this wave, um, it remind it's it's more than likely a uh, flat a flat type move just the way that this corrected uh like this all the way down a lot of people are like wow that thing came down quick um that's a typical sign of an expanded flat that it did and it's right here this a wave down uh three wave back up and then back down into the box okay i have it on a, a parallel channel you'd see the parallel channel i know you see it outside the box but the parallel channel is touching the third wave from the top of that second wave and then also that second wave so it's not done with its correction this whole wave right here i think it's finished and then it's in its fourth wave of this last wave and it's going to swing that back down into the box i'm looking for a target just under twenty thousand dollars so i see it come here it's already halfway through that channel it might go all the way over to the other side of the channel and then eventually drop but the the bottom of the parallel channel is going to be its target in this area. So 20,000, and it's not going to be a surprise to me when I see it down there. And uh, the bears will be gleeful and stuff. So that's what's happening with that. Now, the odds of this just going down one and then back up for two and then swinging back down like this, like you see uh, some, some of the bears back down, don't think so, guys. Uh, I don't think it's doing that. I think you have more of an odd of this being a flat where this came down in A wave, Swing back up, three wave, B wave. This is the 2.618 Fibonacci down here that I checked it. And um, it just has, to me, the characteristics of an expanded flat. So technically, Bitcoin was in a correction. If you can believe it, Bitcoin's been in a correction since the end of July. That's why it was taking so much time in here. And it, make, it makes more sense to me because it came down, boom, and then it swung back up and it was taking its time. It was just hanging out in there. Characteristics of what? A B wave. B waves can take a lot of time. They just move real slow. They don't go anywhere, just like what it was doing in there. So um, A, a B. So it made a flat type move. For those that don't know, these expanded flats, very common move in the uh, cryptoverse, okay? Or crypto, cryptocurrency market, all markets, as a matter of fact. These flat moves are very surprising moves that take people, uh, you know, get people off guard. So what happens with the flat, you can see why these things can be very devastating. If you have, for those who are new to my channel, new subscribers, I do appreciate you. Thank you very much for subscribing to my channel. You're uh, really helping me out, you know, try to grow this channel and and uh, get this to an area where, um, you know, I just can help people make money instead of getting wrecked at the end of the day. So, Here's your five wave impulse. Everybody's happy. You got move and correction of move on a third wave, the correct in a fourth wave and up to a fifth wave. So where you, these flats really like to end up is just like this comes down in that A wave. People are like, oh, it's just another correction comes up onto a B wave and corrects beyond all time highs. It's actual correction. And then boom. OK, and it can swing back down just like an S&P 500 could actually go up into a massive B wave and then swing back down into a C wave right over there. That could be happening, guys. So, you know, um, they're very, very common moves, very, very common. And so if this is this is a flat move. The worst case scenario for Bitcoin is that I'll let you guys know is that, you know, this is a W that's making an X wave and it can go up for a Y. Um, I haven't been presenting that count lately just because I don't like that count. That's that's a very um, out of sequence move for Bitcoin. Now, it could be possible. I don't think so. I think there's a higher probability that the low was in right here. So I'm going to go more with a, a probability that it could be one, two, 
And then this was the three, and maybe it's coming down for a four, and it could shoot back up for a five. That's a possibility that I'm looking for. Um, could be wrong on that one, too. Um, it could come down here and then have a pretty good bounce. I'm seeing Bitcoin definitely bouncing into this area, okay? And then, you know, you can't rule out that this itself is going to be an ABC, you know, A, and then up for a B and then back down for a C maintaining those lows and then it can get out of there possibly into a wave structure so just not going to know until it plays itself out all right guys now going over ethereum ethereum is there's no big uh deal with it guys i mean look at this massive move that it made it's going to need to correct it okay so you can see it's already in a fifth wave you got your divergence down there it's actually looking pretty good so what you want to see with ethereum guys is going to be pretty straightforward is that here's this A wave, wherever it finishes up, it's going to go up into a B wave, and you want to see it correct back down into a C wave, just like that, okay? So when it finishes this A wave and starts making its B wave, more than likely, this wave will be 50% of this leg, okay? More or less, 50%, and then it's going to come down into a C wave, okay? And uh, if this is 50%, then this will more than likely be about one-to-one -one to the, the, the uh, A wave, so... You can see something like that. And uh, that target, this area right here, is going to be a reasonable target for Ethereum. Right at the bottom of that wave, right there, right on top of that box, is going to be a target. So the correction, you know, it came down quick in an A wave. This B wave is going to take some time, and then it can come back down into a C wave. And then if you see this setup, this is going to be the setup. If you're Ethereum and you like it, this is going to be the setup to uh, what, do what, think about it, start loading up on Ethereum if you like that in this area. So nice correction, pay attention to it in the RSI. It's gonna look really good if the B wave can drag it up a little and then really the C wave drop it really good into the RSI again, guys. Like, uh, let me check the daily on that. I'll show you. It's already done a pretty decent job of uh, taking a lot of it out on the RSI right here on Ethereum. You know, you can see, come back over here, it's basically in those areas. So you want to see it come down, finish, drag the B wave up. And if you see the C wave come way, way down here in the RSI, back down to these areas, you're going to know that's going to be really, really a good indicator, a bullish signal that, hey, it's going to be getting ready to make another move out of there. Okay. So always keep the bearish in the back of your mind. It could drop there. It could go there too, guys. There's all kinds of other targets. Just not going to know, but that's something I'd be looking for. And Ethereum on its overall trend, you know, you take a look at this in this uh, parallel channel, it's looking really, really good, guys. Um, you know, I do think it's going to come down correct, and Ethereum's going to be making its way up to $6,000, more or less. Of course, it's going to matter on the markets. And then the DXY, you know, it's going to finish it up. Ethereum right here, guys, is going to be finishing up its, uh, uh, its deal. So maybe the DXY is uh, still going to be trending up. Ethereum will finish it up, and then it's going to be in a B wave. So then DXY over here will be in a correction, right? It'll be in a correction over in this area. And then uh, Ethereum over here will start making its trend down again on a C leg when the DXY finishes up what it needs to do over there. And then, you know, if you just between the DXY and Ethereum and its correction, you should be able to find yourself a really, really good setup, okay, for this coin. Binance Coin, I like to go over this one too. It's the third largest asset behind uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum. Lots of people don't like to pay attention to it. Binance Coin was one of the reasons why I knew that uh, I was pretty sure that the whole market was in a fifth wave because of Binance Coin. But Binance Coin's in the same uh, scenario, more or less. Um, you're going to have probably, you know, this is more or less turning like into an Ethereum. Um, not uh, not to say that uh, I'm talking about price action wise. I guess I should clarify myself. So here with Binance Coin, when I hear them the daily, um, yeah, it's probably a you know maybe it's already up on its B wave already, and it's going to come back down. Wouldn't be surprised to see Binance Coin correct up and come back down and touch this trend area where you have a touch there, touch, touch, and it come back down, touch these areas back down to say 255 or something like that would not be a surprise and if you can see right here with binance um bottom of that wave four right there boom you can see 
All right. So everything actually look, doesn't look too, too bad for uh, everything, guys. I mean, there's lots of setups coming to uh, get yourself positioned is what I'm going to be doing and getting myself ready for what? Let's take a look at this. Here's uh, let's take a look at the uh, weekly on Ethereum. I know that I'm making this a little bit longer than expected, but uh, it looks pre pretty good for Ethereum, guys. Um, you know, the weekly chart took everything out. This was the area I said, pay attention to Ethereum. It's going to start making moves. And you're getting yourself positioned really, really well. At least uh, I I think uh, I, I would be. And then, you know, correct down. So now you know it's bullish. It corrects. And then you can get into this wave. So you have Ethereum. You have a good shot for Ethereum, guys, right here. Just like this. One, back down, say two. And then it could be going into a wave just like that, guys. Okay? You have a really good shot of that happening, just like so. Okay? Um, that's a re really good shot. It's going to take people by surprise um, with this with this asset. All right, guys, that's the end of my video. I know it's a little bit long-winded. If you made it all the way to the end, I do appreciate you. Um, I know it's correction mode right now, and a lot of people went silent. They're not commenting anymore. Those green candles, they don't see them anymore, and they don't want to, uh, oh, uh, things go bad. Look, guys, corrections give you cl cl more clues about the market. When I see this, I mentioned it in previous videos, expecting a correction to come up, not a big deal. Corrections give you time. If you're on the long side, corrections give you time to get yourself positioned and get yourself ready. A lot of the other assets are looking really good, like ICP, I think Metis, and uh, things. So, all right, that's the end of my video, guys. Be all the way to the end. Drop a like, hit the subscribe button. Peace.